Good morning. And welcome to a bright and sunny Winnipeg. Okay, I think that now it's going to be safe to glue. I don't believe this. I honestly thought I had painted the bottom of that. I have not finished painting that. I'll do it offline. I'll just quickly get it done. I was going to say now we can glue, glue our part down and, and uh, in my mind I thought I'd, uh, well I guess I'd done it in my mind so often I thought I'd really done it. I, I haven't painted the rest of the, oh my goodness, I'm worried again. <laughs> okay, I noticed that uh, Steve in the model shed has got step, uh, episode 25 out on his Bismarck build. And that's really coming along. Yeah. He's going to have to seriously start thinking about that case to hold both his Bismarck and his hood. I think he was talking about that, oh, a while back. Anyway, um, I, I was thinking about, you know, my, my Bismarck, which I've completed <clears throat> in his Bismarck. And I was thinking that mine is going to look just as good from two arms lengths away. Well, maybe the his coloring might be a little bit better, but uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, he, but he's doing a beautiful detailed job. He, as as a lot of you know, you've been watching, and he's he's doing the he's got the detailing kit to give it the extra pizzazz. Anyway, enough about Steve's Bismarck. Uh, we're a little bit later this morning. Uh, I had to put my model table back together again, you might say, or recompose it. Uh, I had something sitting on here last night, and uh, you'll see it in a very short rollback. Uh, and uh, why don't we just roll back, and uh, and then we can continue on. While you're watching the rollback, I'll finish painting this. Okay, I have decided to use the model table to glue this together on. My arms are a little bit too short on one end. Okay, so that's going to go like that, more or less. This one is going to go down here. And these will be glued in place like that. Then we're going to have a, uh, I guess you call it some kind of a cross member. sort of a cantilever type brace here to, to keep it from going like this and uh, I know the lathe is going to be sitting here on these things and I want to be careful that I don't glue this down here because if I do it then it's not, it's not going to fit there so it's got to be up just a little bit I'll have to go check my lathe and find out you know where it sort of angles in like this because once this is glued down, it's not coming off. And, uh, and there's going to be glue on these joints as well here. And that, that'll keep it from going like this. It's actually going to be quite, you might say, scroogle. I know I like to use that word a lot, but it's, uh, it, it, it should be. I'm noticing though this, uh, there's a tiny little bit of twist in this 2x4. I, I think I can probably take that out once I tighten the screws in. Uh, okay, I'm just going to go ahead now and, and uh, stick it together and uh, probably the next time you see it, it'll be uh, standing up in the back room with the lathe on it. Hopefully. 
Okay, I've got our uh, deck painted now. And at this very moment, it's sitting in front of a, a fan to try and force dry it. I know that's probably not the best way to do it, but <laughs> I've only got one lifetime here, and this ship seems to be taking up most of it. So, uh, maybe to save a little bit of time here, we're almost done step 23. All we have to do is just glue this onto here. All these other parts, all these other things are done. So then 23 is done and we can move on to, what would this piece be here? 23 and a half? It's not 24 and it's not 23, so we'll call it 23 and a half. Uh, or maybe 24 minus. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Maybe uh, we should try and find our uh, the six little pieces we need. Oh, somebody made a good suggestion, and I, I don't know why I didn't think of it. And and he said that why don't you? Uh, I remember, I was putting the alligator clips on, and I was saying we're probably not going to notice the the masking. In fact, there, right here, is one place you can't you can't even see it, can you? And right there is the other place. But he was saying, why didn't you just put the alligator clip? where you were going to fasten these. In other words, like, it could be right here, or right here. <laughs> yeah, should have thought of that. Well, too late now. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's find our uh, J9s and our J4s. Now, speaking of sprues, for the last uh, four builds, what I've done is, yeah, this is the fourth one, uh, what I've done is I've made labels like this and I've stuck it in the plastic bag uh, so that I can see because right here if the light is just right you can see that it, it probably says J right there but you can't see it really good so I've been having these these labels that I've stuck in the bags and usually one out of three times when I pull the sprue out of the bag this falls on the floor and I have to try and find it well, actually, it's easy to see, but I have to try and bend over and pick it up. Maybe that's a little bit better way of putting it. Anyway, so let me get this bag out of the way here. Something I want to mention here. Um, I was watching the latest upload from Thailand Jim, and he had a real slick idea. And when I get the Bismarck, I mean, when I get the uh, Yamato, uh, this is what I'm going to do with all its sprues. I'm, I'm going to take a piece of masking tape, and you know what? I'm going to I'm going to pirate a little a little bit of his clip, and and you'll see what he said. It's a it's a fantastic idea, and I don't know why I didn't think of it. You notice here that uh, I've labeled the uh, sprue with a, a large letter I with masking tape. Helps me identify with sprue. Okay, wasn't that a slick idea? Like I said before, sometimes you think to yourself. Why didn't I think of that? Anyway, by the way, th this is a, a, a 9, not a 6. You're looking at this sprue upside down. Alright, there are four 9s. the fours, there are four. Maybe I just do it like this. We don't have all day here. No, let's not accidentally nip this. And the last one. Notice how I stick my finger in the scene for perspective. Okay. We are basically cleaned up here. I'm noticing there's some pretty bad flashing still on this one. Actually, there's pretty bad flashing on all of them. Now I get now when the light hits it just right. Or maybe I should say just wrong. Well, if I stick them on like this, I'll just have to make sure that the light is uh, adjusted accordingly in the case so nobody will notice. Or I could take out an extra couple of minutes and just run my my uh, knife edge along the edge of that and just, just remove the, that, that worst of it there. 
yeah when the when the shadow catches it you can really see it I, I missed that sorry about that now the reason I got my uh, sprue pieces here is I was going to save these for the for the uh, sprue pen but then I concluded that they're just a little bit too small I don't want the sprue pen to have too many little white specks in it I want the the pieces to be sort of large and predominant that show on the side of the of the uh, solid blank pen blank anyway that that's the plan so Oh, one, one more thing. I was going to mention that when I do label my sprues for the Yamato, I'm not going to be putting them in a cardboard box like I have them right now. Well, it, well, it will be a cardboard box, but it'll be sort of like a filing system, uh, like a filing cabinet. I, I believe I got that idea from a, a viewer about three years ago. He mentioned he did that with his sprues, uh, but he didn't say anything about using masking tape to label them. Uh, yeah, good idea there, Jim. I can't get over that can't get over why I didn't think of it. Okay, I won't mention that anymore. Okay, now you know how I get a kick out of trying to do something on camera. And this may not work. Now, I can take my blade and I can either do the, use the back of the blade where it's, where it's still fairly sharp, or I can use the sharp part of the blade. And I'm going to use the sharp part, part of the blade because I don't want to be putting too much pressure on this because I'll probably push it down out of sight. So I'm just going to just sort of drag it along. Sort of scrape it here. Got a little bit of uh, with a flat with a sprue connected on there. Now this is something that I don't spend anywhere near as much time doing as I should. I should do this more often. Now I'll probably take my or what I should do. I don't know if I'll bother. Is is take my. Uh, sanding stick and just my my fine one and just sort of get rid of these extra burrs I'm only going to do this one time so if it didn't turn out and you couldn't see what I was doing well it's the way it goes you'll be seeing me using a scraper a lot more when it comes to turning the sprue pan because I like using a scraper a lot better than a a gouge. Those of you who are turners will know what I'm talking about here. The scraper is much more forgiving. Okay. I'll just sort of... Okay, I think we've done enough here. Now, now at 2 o'clock this afternoon, my son's coming over for coffee, so I don't want to let the time get away on me here. Let me just check the monitor. How's that look? Oh, it looks terrible. Okay. Okay, what do we got going here this time? This is one quarter of the pizza that I made last night. And what I've got going on is on the bottom, see if I can show it to you here. It's hot, so I don't want to burn myself. But I, I got a, a pizza crust on the bottom. Then in, in the middle here, I've got ground beef, uh, pizza sauce, and, um, and mushrooms. Then on the top, well, then, then there's another layer of crust here. I don't know if I can... Uh, you know, I, I don't need to be showing you all of this, but anyway, th there's another crust. Then on the top, I've got sliced pepperoni pieces and mozzarella cheese. Oh, and there's, there's mozzarella cheese in, in with the uh, ground beef as well. 
So there's, uh, you know, I had wanted to have sliced olives, but there, there was none. I had whole olives, but uh, yeah, I guess I, I thought I had uh, uh, some, some sliced olives, but uh, uh, be careful now, don't, don't burn yourself wrong, but boy, does this ever look good. Okay, I think we're just about ready now to glue this onto this. Um, I think it was uh, Jeff was mentioning in a comment that what I should have done here is painted this as sort of a deck tan uh, and not the dark gray. And he was saying that there was some that, that these pads were some sort of wood. And uh, yeah, I can sort of envision that now. That's probably what I should have done, but I didn't. So it is what it is, unfortunately. Now I guess I could go over it again and and uh, do it, you know, cover it up. But then then I risk going up the splinter wall with the deck tan. So I'm just going to leave it, even though it's not maybe exactly correct. At least this is going to match the the deck area of everything else, all the all the, all the surrounding stuff. Um, <clears throat> Okay, when I was watching uh, Steve in the model shed, he was mentioning how when he uh, when he uh, glues something on, like a large part onto a deck, like we're going to be doing here, what what he does is he puts the glue along on the inside of the of this instead of on the outside of the other, and I was thinking uh, to myself, uh, him's smart like me because that's the way I do it too if you will, will recall. So, uh, yeah, that's what we'll be doing. But I don't think we're going to be doing it in this episode, but I just want to put this back on here very carefully here. And I just want to see how is it going to look. Do we have the appropriate decking showing? Yes, we do. Okay. I was kind of worried that maybe I didn't go in far enough because we have this, this uh, stairwell or lad ladder you know, uh, where a ladder has to go. And, uh, anyway, trying to think out loud here and not make any sense. But, you know, I, I've got to wrap today's episode up, folks. So uh, I haven't done hardly any editing on, on today's episode, and I've got a lot to do. So thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>